The most fun of those tricks was just putting a wild card. I don't really want to track a specific keyword necessarily. I want to see how a page is performing because healthy pages aren't ranking for one keyword. They're ranking for hundreds or thousands of keywords. So a misconception that some people have is that uh, on page is the same for every okay. So the first step is obviously. One common issue that business owners have, SEOs and also SEO agencies, is that they don't know what they need on their website. They don't know how many backlinks they need. They don't know what internal links to use. They don't know what articles to actually upload to actually help them rank higher in Google. Now, what I have done here is I've created the Traffic Accelerator system. This will tell you exactly how many articles you need to rank for your keyword. It tells you what anchors to use for your internal linking and it also tells you how many backlinks your website is lacking in comparison to your competitors. Now, the reason why I've created the Traffic Accelerator system is to actually help reduce your SEO costs. A lot of people think that they need to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars to actually rank higher in Google. In reality, that's actually not the case. If you want to stop overspending and take the guesswork out of SEO, click the link down below, get your traffic accelerator system. It's only $195 and it'll tell you exactly what your website is lacking. Now back to the video. Welcome back to another episode. Now this isn't going to be a podcast. We're going to be doing a full SEO breakdown with the man, the myth, the legend, Kyle. Well, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So um, we, we, we actually had a conversation before. I've already had you on the podcast. There was no reason to have you on for, uh, for a second time but i think that there's a lot of knowledge that we can pass wait uh, there's no reason to have me on for a second time well <laughs> no reason to have you on for a second time for the podcast everyone knows who, who you are yeah. what you do so what we've decided to do is do a full seo breakdown from start to finish um there's going to be certain things that you're going to chime in with i'll chime in with the link building but let's do it all right so the the first step is obviously the keyword research, right? Yeah, it can be. <laughs> it can. What, 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 what were you thinking? Well, I want to decide uh, the structure of my site. Okay. And certainly, some keyword research goes into that. that. That's it's all kind of part of it. But I want to determine what are going to be my top level pages. You might think of those as money pages, the thing that you want to show up in Google, the uh, the bottom of the funnel mm -hmm. type pages. I want to think about what are going to be my top level pages for the site, what are going to be my supporting pages for the site, and what are going to be my resource pages for the site. Um, a lot of time people just throw up pages on the site, you know, for different terms, and then they've got a blog, and they've got stuff over there, and then they're doing this and that. And they really haven't decided what is the purpose of this page. And I think you can get lost really quick and you get scattered really quick and you start chasing shiny objects yeah. quickly. And so one of the first things I want to do is I want to make those determinations. Is this a, a, a top level page? Is this a supporting page or a resource page? Because it's going to, I'm going to do different levels of optimization to it. I'm going to look at different out, outside signals coming into it. And um, I think one, even before getting into keyword research, if you've got that kind of concept together, and what your goal is going to be like, how many top level pages are you going to shoot for to start with? Like if it's a brand new site and nothing's built, can you do five? Mm -hmm. Can you do 10? Should you do five? You know, yeah. should you do 10? And so before I'm doing even that keyword research, what I'm probably doing is I'm going to find two or three competitors. They're doing really well in the space. And I'm going to look at their structure. I'm going to find pages that overlap. And probably before even having to do any keyword research, you could probably get the first 50 pages of your site done right then and there. And they're the ones that you know are going to be most successful because you can throw those into an Ahrefs or an SEMrush and see which pages are performing the best for them, yeah. which ones are actually bringing the most amount of revenue. So you don't really even have to guess on the keyword research just from out of the game. You're like, these are the top pages. These are the ones I want to go for first. Right, okay. So then once you have laid out your structure, let's say we're going to go after um, 10 bottom of the funnel, service pages you've then got like maybe like 20 30 middle of the funnel and then you've got like the top of the funnel the the resource pages as i like to call them as well um so you might have like overall you, you might be looking at like a 60 page website across the board what's step action to like what, what would you use pop at any any time in this time i would do the so the most amount of optimization i want to do are on those bottom of the funnel top level if you will money type pages that, that i'm going all in on with on-page optimization. Right. For the other ones, I would do one more kind of thinning of the herd on those. 
uh, to look at the relative strength of my site. Uh, if you've got an absolutely brand new site, now you're looking for the lowest competition terms that you can and terms that probably have a, that come up on search volume of zero to 10. Because what I want to do is when I launch those pages, I want to win them almost immediately. Right. You know, and once those pages start to win, uh, keywords and impressions, they gain strength and that raises the authority of your site. So you can use that level of supporting page to raise the relative strength of the overall site. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out where my strength is mm -hmm. on site and I'm going to launch something where I can do relatively little, the least amount of SEO for the most amount of gain. And by least amount, I mean putting that target term in the page title in the H1, maybe one time in the content and that's it. And I should rank for it. Right. And so I'm going to try to find where that level is. If you've got a site that's you know been around for a few years and you've got some authority, maybe you're going at terms with a search volume of 150 to 300 because you can win those kind of quickly. But otherwise, I'm looking for some relative level of what the site is so that I can then post those and win them. I'm going to interlink them together mm -hmm. in, in groups of, say, three to five. And I'm going to choose that set of three to five to support one of those top level pages. Right. Okay. And that's all they're going to do. They're not going to link out to anything else on the site. They're only going to link to each other, mm -hmm. their little friends. Yeah. And then they're going to support that one target page. And that's what they exist on the site to do. They exist on the site to rank quickly, to build authority, to pass juice between that little silo that you're creating, that little cluster that you're creating, and then to support that top level page. Because if it, especially if it's a new site, you're not going to win that top level page anytime soon. Yeah. But you still want to get traffic into the site. You want to raise the authority of the site. And you want to do it with as little of SEO as possible because uh, you can you can win so much in SEO just through research mm -hmm. without doing any heavy on-page SEO and off-page SEO. And the more you can do with that, the less susceptible you are to Google updates, the safer your site is, the less volatile it is. You're kind of building a moat of safety yeah. around your site through content. And so that's what I want to do, especially with, with a brand new site. So let's say we were going to try and rank for divorce lawyers in New York, right? That that's our top, uh, sorry, that's our bottom of the funnel page. That's the page that's going to generate us a lot of cash, especially if we're a law firm. Would you then look to let's say create like maybe five or six um, blog articles where it might be like, how much does a divorce lawyer cost? What questions should you ask a divorce lawyer? Um, like s s exactly articles right, like that, right? exactly right. So then you internal link those articles together, mm -hmm. that's right. and the, you then internal link those back up to your divorce lawyer. That's exactly right. And then what happens is, as they grow in strength, they're passing juice to mm -hmm. that top level page. It it allows you to become less reliant on external signals. You'll still you'll still need to obviously build into that into that top level page, but the more strength that those little guys get. Uh, the less work you have to do. Yeah. And also the safer that it is because mm -hmm. you're completely within Google's guidelines. You're allowed to interlink pages on your site. You're allowed to out research your competitors and there's no update that touches that. Yeah. Because you've just done research. You've just done, you've done good content. Mm -hmm. You know, you've provided good content. You're providing good information. Uh, it's a win all the way around. And on top of that, a lot of those terms, when somebody's searching for what is the cost for a lawyer or what should I ask, they're probably moving their way through the funnel. Yeah. And so even though it might not be that divorce lawyer, New York term mm -hmm. that you would love to have, it's still probably a term that's pretty valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there might be uh, specific things within, like if you're getting a divorce within New York versus a divorce in California, there might be different laws, misconceptions that people have. And so you can actually get people that are moving their way through the funnel and get really good traffic before even winning that top level, that, mm -hmm. that money term. Yeah, definitely. Uh, an, another good example of this, like I, I want to try and give as, as many examples of this as, as much as I possibly can. But um, like, let's say, for example, if we had um, hosting or review, right? Somebody that's searching for that, they're they're pretty like low in the funnel. Like they, they're ready to basically maybe just read a few couple pros and cons and then they're like, right, okay, I'm going to click the affiliate link. I'm going to purchase the, the hosting. A middle of the funnel, uh, it could be like hosting or versus yeah. Kyle Roof hosting. Yeah. And again, you've got like pros and cons to both. And they're like, oh, okay, what's Kyle Roof hosting? I'm going to click on that. And then that's that's like your affiliate link or that's like the the one step before. So what what a lot of people I feel like they do is they don't do the, the smaller articles because they're like, ah, oh, that's low ROI. But in reality, if you can start pushing them down into the bottom of the funnel, that can be a very high ROI article. Absolutely, absolutely, and on top of that, you know, you're you're trying to build a a, a house without a foundation. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then the moment the moment the wind blows, it's like, oh no, well, how did my whole house fall down? It's because you didn't have that foundation of content of yep. authority that you were slowly but surely building up. You know, you, you've got a, a very unstable website. And then one little update comes along and you know, just flicks your whole house down. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 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 and and you're gone. And they wonder like, well, how did this happen? Well, it happened because you didn't build that foundational layer. You didn't raise the authority of the site. And if you're just going after kind of those higher terms, you're probably using a lot of external signals mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to get that done. Yep. And the first thing Google takes away are external signals. Yeah. Plus external signals rot over mm-hmm. time. You know, they, yeah, they go you've away. Got link crawl. Your competitors, the probably the thing that they're focused on the most is backlinks as well. It turns mm-hmm. into this arms race. I would like to not play that game. Yeah, you know, I'd yeah, like yeah. to get out of that as much as possible, and it comes through really just out researching your competitors because these terms exist that you can do this with. Mm-hmm. That stuff is out there. A lot of it, though, is again the as I always say, the secret is hiding in plain sight. Find those sites that are doing it well. See what pages they have in common. That's probably a great place to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and and you can run them through the tools to see which ones are getting the most impressions and stuff like that. And so then. Once you, so a few questions going back to the actual articles. Um, let's say you establish that there's 60 articles that your competitors have that they're doing really well and you're like, right, I, I want these 60 articles. Some of them might be like the bottom of the funnel, like um, divorce lawyers, um, immigration lawyer, mm-hmm. um, finance law, commercial law, right? So th- those those are like the bottom of the page and you're like, th- these are going to generate a lot of cash. Do you upload those first or do you upload the blog articles first? Or what, You're kind of doing it in conjunction, but you have to get those up there because one of the factors to ranking for those terms is time. Right, okay. And so you just have to get it up. It doesn't mm-hmm. need to be perfect, but yeah. you do need a page that's targeting that. You know, something that maybe we should have even take a, a step farther back is if you have a term that's important to you, a concept that's important to you, you need to have one page on your site that's dedicated to that. Mm-hmm. A lot of times on the agency side of things, if I'm talking to someone and they're like, okay, I want to win this particular term, you know, if they're extremely new to SEO and, and I'll be, okay, well, which page on your site are you focusing on? That? Are you optimizing for that? And you just kind of hear crickets. Yeah. Like, um, the site, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, that's not uh, how it works. Google doesn't rank the website. It ranks a particular page. So though, e- even if you have a brand new site and there's no chance of winning that term anytime soon, you still want to get that page up. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, working in conjunction with those foundational pages, but you got to get a, at least a few of those up, and then I'm building out those supporting pages, and I'm also immediately uh, interlinking them mm-hmm. so that as that foundational layer gets stronger, it's pushing up juice to those pages that are going to take some time to win. Yeah, definitely. So then um, also, by the way, if any of you guys are struggling with like keeping up, um, we've we've obviously got Page Optimizer Pro, so I'll have a link to that. And that you you've shown me like um, within Page Optimizer Pro, there is actually like a section that does this for you, where it does like the keyword research. We're just launching that now. Yeah, yeah that's right. So that's right. I'm hoping by the time this video goes out, <laughs> I think it will live. be. I think it will. Um, be. So if you guys are struggling on that, feel free to check it out. But going back to the actual next step, technical SEO, okay. right? Because a lot of people. They think they need to be doing technical SEO audits every week. Um, my opinion is typically if you've got like a good theme and you're consistently uploading articles, you technical SEO, like running an actual screaming frog audit, you might only need to do that like once every three months. Once you've if, got like a, yeah. If. Um, what, what's, what, what's, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. What's nice about modern page builders and modern hosting uh, and things like Cloudflare is they cover most of those problems for you, mm-hmm. which is great. It, it, even three, four years ago, I think it, it was slightly different. But now things are pretty much taken care of for you, so that it don't go on the cheap. You know, yeah. you, but also, you don't need you know you don't need a ten thousand dollar website for for sixty pages. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I would get something that isn't maybe from Fiverr. No offense to to the Fiverr devs. I would, I would find something in the middle there. And if you've got a, a, a reasonably new page builder and reasonably good hosting, uh, that's going to take care of yeah. nearly all your problems. Uh, you know, every six months, the kind of thing I would check. But if you've got Search Console hooked up, which is, if you're unfamiliar, it's, it's a free thing from Google that shows you where your organic traffic is coming from. It'll also alert you to issues that they're seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of have a, a 20% rule. 
you know, when you're looking at like errors, uh, like 404 errors, if you're under, if those errors are under 20% of what the total number of pages on the site are, I'm feeling okay. Yeah. You know, I would get to them quarterly or maybe half yearly to, to make sure that I'm, I've got that under control, but, um, I don't really sweat it too much. Now, if you have things like a 500 error, that that's a, a serious error and that's mm-hmm. something that you want to take care of. But all the other errors that show up, I'm looking about like, if I'm under 20% of the total amount of pages on the site, you're okay. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress I am, um, do you know what? This might just be my OCD. I just like to fix everything. Cause yeah. then it's like, at, at least it's like ticked off. If, if you go down in rankings, you're like, well, at least it's not the technical SEO side of stuff. That's fair. And I, I see what you're saying. The only thing that I would be hesitant of, hesitant on that is that some people think that by doing that they've done seo oh yes yeah 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 that is true and and you really haven't like when you think about in terms of what technical does for you is it it doesn't help you rank Mm -hmm. but it helps you not rank (laughs) yes yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know the idea is like a technical error can keep you from ranking but it's nothing like i fixed this now my ranking should go up that's Mm -hmm. that's not how it works so you want to make sure that you kind of the you know if if you're looking at a farm the, the technical SEO is, is tilling the ground, yeah, you know, and removing the rocks and, and the, and the weeds and making sure that the environment is, is what it needs to be. So just having a beautiful dirt patch, you know, isn't going to grow any plants, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that's you, true. Know, you have to then, you know, plant the seed and water it and get it sunlight and stuff like that. That's what makes the plant grow. But for the best environment, you, you have to do all of those things there. And then you have the opportunity to, think, to rank um, and to, to grow if we want to. Uh, keep going with the analogy yeah the 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 best seo is really boring seo that that, that's that that, that's another way to put it it's literally just content and links it's grinding it's grinding on that yeah setting a plan and sticking to it uh which is hard to do Mm -hmm. because you want to start chasing shiny you you have to you often think there's more to it than this Mm mm-hmm it really isn't. There's not. No. It, it's 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 setting that plan, saying these are the pages we're going to do. This is why we're doing them, uh, and, and this is how we're going to go about executing that. But kind of getting back to my original point, a lot of people don't have a why on the pages that they're they're putting up. They're yeah. just putting up pages for the sake of of putting up. They're not interlinking properly, or they're defaulting to like a plugin just to choose all of their their interlinking for them without really a design to it, mm-hmm. a reason for it. Now there are a lot of great plugins that help you, but you need to be able to look at it and be like, yeah, this is the right way to link. And this plugin's helping me out versus just letting it go on its own. That, that That's not purposeful. One other type of page that I would add in, um, which I, I would identify as a resource page, would be something where um, you, you want to link to a lot of different pages on your site because you've built something that uh, can attract uh, – shares and, and like links click base exactly so oh, like something that's a, a it's great information mm-hmm. it's about stuff about the site generally and it might touch on several topics on your site and that's great to have that's great to put into the mix it's just not something that i put into that layer that i'm using to raise the overall authority of the site in terms of like that research we talked about at the supporting page level but it's good to have those yeah and you should again if you're doing that you should have a purpose for it i'm going to build this so i can attract links i can i can get shares socially i can get traffic to it maybe you could run ads to it if you really wanted to get traffic in and then you're very specifically linking two parts of the site Mm -hmm. to pass you know authority and juice etc around have a purpose for that put it on the site and then you know why it's there yeah and you're going to do so much better with those kind of things because you understand like i'm doing this piece of content so I can actually share it across uh, TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Perfect. And then that gives you clarity, focus, and you can actually get do a really good job with that thing. You're not yeah. doing it just for the sake of doing it. What, one example of that that done really well was, um, I don't rem- know if you remember Backlinko. Yeah. They done, um, it, I believe they done like an article to do with like link building. It, it might have been like the ultimate link building checklist yeah um and that ended up getting like six thousand referring domains like oh, yeah. loads of traffic loads of loads of people were sharing it in like facebook groups reddit it, it literally went like many viral within the seo space i feel like brian this is brian dean he, yeah. he did the um the first like 200 factors i feel like it might have been yeah, yeah. it was the um these are the 200 factors uh and and that just got shared mm-hmm. like crazy and that's brilliant that, yeah, that, that's yeah. brilliant, brilliant marketing. Now that that piece of content, I wouldn't use just to support one t- 
target page, mm-hmm. that's the kind of thing that you can spread juice across your entire site. Yeah, definitely. And then that's why you would do something like that because you know it's going to be shared. People are going to link to it. Uh, traffic's going to come to it. And then you can spread that across. The site doesn't need to go into a little mini silo mm-hmm. on that supporting page level. It's its own thing to pass juice, authority, traffic, et cetera, throughout the entire site. Yeah, definitely. We, we will obviously dabble into like the link building side of stuff because this is this is kind of like you're creating a page to do with like link building and stuff but going back to or moving away from technical seo going on to like a little bit more on page seo right so you've uploaded these pages um they've started ranking a little bit what are you doing for re-optimization of the pages like what what tools are you using um what are you looking for so a, a, a misconception that some people have is that uh, on page is the same for every term mm-hmm. and they might be using a, a plugin or something that gives them like green dots. It's like, you've done SEO and yeah, and you really haven't because what you need to do for e- each page changes keyword to keyword, niche to niche. And that's the amount of times you're using certain terms in specific places and what those terms are. And so you want to do that first run of optimization where you're really going in on it to try to dial all of that in. But then the goalposts do shift. That happens when there's an update in their new competitors that have moved in or your competitors got more competitive yeah. and they moved in. And so um, it's not just enough to watch your rankings for the page, but you want to watch the SERPs, mm-hmm. you know, the search engine results for that term to see if there has been a change that you need to be mindful of. And so that's the kind of thing, at least at a minimum quarterly, I'm looking at to see have the goalposts shifted and do I need to tweak this page to stay in line with what Google is currently rewarding? Yeah. Um, my horribly shameless plug is that <laughs> this was a problem that I had, uh, you know, in, in the agency, and, and we built this into Pop. And we call it Watchdog, and you can set, uh, depending on your plan, weekly, monthly, quarterly for that review, and then we'll send you an email like, "Hey, these are the new competitors that are in. These are the competitors that have fallen out, and these are some terms you should add to stay." W- so that you're staying within it and kind of solving my own problem yeah. is why we did that. But you need some way to do that mm-hmm. where you're keeping an eye on what's happening in that particular, uh, you know, page one, page two of Google, who's moving in and out and then uh, tweaking accordingly. One common issue that all website owners and business owners have is that they don't know what they need when it comes to SEO. This is why I've created the Traffic Accelerator System. The Traffic Accelerator System tells you exactly how many backlinks your website is missing, how many articles you need to publish on your website to gain topical authority, and also what internal link anchors you should be using on your website. You see, I've spoken to tons of business owners over the years, and one commonality that they all have is that they think they need to spend a lot of money to get SEO to work. In reality, that's not the case. The Traffic Accelerator system is actually designed to reduce your cost by taking guesswork out of SEO. If you want the Traffic Accelerator system for your website and you want to rank higher on Google, click the link down below. It's only $195 to get the audit for your website. Now back to the video. Yeah, the, that, that that's one issue that I've had in the past where like a core algorithm will, will come out and then you're like oh my god I've, I've lost 50% of my traffic or potentially you might even say the other way I've gained 50% of my traffic and, and you, you just want to know why either yeah. way right and um, in some cases after a core algorithm update what ends up happening is um, Google might have preferred a listicle style article right. and now they prefer more of a, a blog post or like a, a long form article or it might have been vice versa. They they might have preferred like a long form 6,000 word monster guide and now what they're actually looking for is maybe like um, a bullet pointed list or like short paragraphs. Um, so that, that that's one of the struggles that I've had in the past and the, the only way that I had been doing it like years uh, years ago was like literally doing it manually. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that that's exactly right. The the thing that's more terrifying is when you hear everybody talking about an update and you're not seeing anything. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, "Oh no, should I do something?" And and so having something like a watchdog type feature like where you're using that, it can give you that peace of mind where like, "Okay, I'm good." Mm-hmm. The other thing too is like you know, did this update, did it affect on page or did it affect more off page? And if you see that, yeah, there's been a change in some of the results, but the on page didn't change that much. Mm-hmm. This was likely something external then. 
Yeah. This was dealing more with backlinks than so at least give you some indication of what is this update about, what what's happening here, because then you can see what the changes were in the SERP and then see what you might have to tweak, at least from an on-page perspective. Yeah, definitely. What, one thing that you mentioned last night, which um, is it, it, it's something that I've subconsciously been doing, but it's, uh, it's also something that you've um, been subconsciously doing, is you said that some of the best on-page SEO websites – they're not actual position one. They, oh, they yeah. might be yeah. like position seven or they might be on page two. Um, can you expand on that a little bit? Because I think that when it comes to the competitor research side of stuff, that's also important to know. Oh, yeah. So it when you look at you know results one through 10, number one spot doesn't necessarily mean that it has the best on-page SEO mm-hmm. because there are other factors that go in. You've got time yep. is, is a big factor. And then also external signals, mostly backlinks are, are a, a big factor. Um, so the, the page that is most optimized is likely not the, the first page. Um, here's a real simple hack to find it. You know, let's say divorce lawyer, New York is your term. Do that search in quotes. Mm-hmm. That search in quotes, what it does, it's looking for the term specifically on the page. And it's, it's um, muting a lot of external signals within the algorithm. And you'll see the list of which are probably the best um, optimized pages for that term. Yeah, we actually have that feature in Pop as well, right, okay. where you can choose keyword focus, and it's going to fo- it's going to focus in on the pages regardless of their rank mm-hmm. that um, uh, have the best on page optimization for yeah. the term. But that is a great way to find those pages, and you'll often see they're sitting in the number eight spot. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. in the number twelve spot, and that's that's great, and that's so good to identify, so that when you're doing your optimization, you'd be like, okay, these are the ones we're going to really focus on because we know we can dial in better on page with them i don't know if you you remember this but do you remember like four or five years ago um you were able to set up your own like google search engine mm-hmm. and you could import all of like the website or like all of your competitors yeah that didn't actually take into consideration um off page seo it was literally from a mostly on page yeah yeah that's right of view. so that's right i remember like now, now that you've mentioned that I've, i used to do it with with co- uh, custom search engines yeah, um, and it would give you like the best results based off their on page SEO. That's right. The most fun of those tricks was just putting a wild card, you know, yeah. just the asterisks into the um, into the search bar and hitting go, and it used to give you the top local pages. Ah, right. Okay. Which was great for backlink building because you can look at the ones and like these are the most relevant local links that you can go after. Right. Okay. And then somebody did like a blog post about it, and it was immediately gone. <laughs> Yeah, the, that um, was a tragic day in like 2017. Yeah, that that was um, yeah, that was that was around 2017. Yeah, something around there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so then, obviously, we've we've spoke a lot about the on-page SEO, and we keep looping back around to off-page SEO. And before we get to off-page SEO, um, let's talk about EEAT. Okay. Because there's a big, massive misconception about EEAT, um, and I think that. We have a lot of agreements on EEAT, myself and, 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 and you, in terms that EEAT for one site could be completely different for another. Like, for example, if I'm a local plumber, EEAT could be literally just like videos being posted on like my social media, and that's going to help build more trust. Um, having case studies of like a kitchen remodeling, having images that's EEAT in some cases. Whereas if, say, for example, you have got a website and you're providing financial advice to millions of people in the UK, a Wikipedia page for your offer could be EEAT, Mm -hmm. right? So you've got all of these EEAT different signals, but what's what's your thoughts? In the same way when we were talking about technical SEO, um, won't help you rank, but it can keep you from ranking Mm -hmm. is the same thing with EEAT. It's not going to help you rank at all mm-hmm. uh, like hey i dialed in my eat and my rankings didn't go up eh, they're not gonna but when there's an eat check you can lose the ranking that you had mm-hmm. and so that's why you want to go and, and do those things but you're correct um certain sites get more scrutiny than others and that was the initial thing where eat came from on the medic update with the your money or your life sites you know that are going after supplements health finance yeah payday loans stuff like that that's all um under a much higher level scrutiny i would say most sites now probably have some form of an eat check and i think 
you guys uh, identify that it's probably some sort of traffic trigger that once you get up yeah. to a certain level, that's probably where you trigger a a, a check. So we 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 analyze like it must have been it must have been at least sixty websites that literally went up and they came crumbling back down. And this isn't like something like HCU. This is like maybe two three year yeah. two years ago probably, and it came down to. Um, there was a Google, if you went into Google Analytics, um, you can even do this in GA4 as well. You could see that there was a, what 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 does Google call them? The Google... The Raiders? Yeah, the Google Quality Raiders would hit certain pages. Right. And literally, it, it was like a diet, like one, one thing that I never talk about is like correlation, but this was like direct correlation across like 60 different websites where it would like hit on the 1st of June, the Google Quality Rater, and like the 10th of June, your website would tank. It would hit on the 1st of August, <laughs> 5th of August, your website would tank. And it wasn't like you would drop maybe for a couple hundred keywords. You would go from like maybe 50,000 hits to down to like literally like 40. Yeah. Like 40, 40 hits, not 40,000 by yeah, the way. Yeah. So you've like lost like 99% of your traffic overnight. Um, and so what I think doing eat stuff, <laughs> the, eat, the eat checklist stuff is to try to stop that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I, I think you're right from niche to niche. Some people need more than others. And that's something that you can use and eat. EAT could literally be like, for example, if, if any of the e-commerce guys are listening to this, EAT could be like a returns policy. Absolutely. Like there, there's been times where I've been buying something online and I'm like, oh, I wonder what this store's uh, return policy is. And I will search like ASOS return policy or wh whatever I'm, I'm buying. So there, there's certain pages like that. Um, there's obviously, I, I, almost say that there's two forms of EAT as well. There's on-page EAT, so like you've got like your offer pages, your offer boxes, um, mentioning that you've you've won certain awards on your website, but you, uh, you there's also off-page EAT. So is Kyle Roof only mentioned on Page Optimizer Pro or is he mentioned across the web? Is he doing like videos like this? I, w I would tend to agree with that. Uh, off page, there's there's a, a certain element to it. I think for most businesses, it would fall under citations mm -hmm. that you're listed in relevant directories for your niche and for your location. Yeah, and that Google can confirm the information that it's seeing on your site, and it can confirm it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That's what I think a lot of the the off page eat is, which goes into maybe this is a segue into link building, but the first round is of links that you want to build for a website or citations. Yeah. Because you want Google to understand who you are and, mm -hmm. and what you're doing and where you're located. And a lot of that information comes from citations. Uh, and so as part of doing EAT, you're right, there is a lot that's on page, but the off page stuff and where I would tend to focus on for off page signals for most businesses are going to be in citations. Yeah, definitely. So doing a segue into sure. off page SEO, um, <laughs> where, I typically start is getting social profiles. Yeah. Um, making certain that like, for example, I've got my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that set up. Now, again, those links, they're not necessarily going to help you jump from position 55 to position five, but it's just good to have those mm. just to like, for example, it's not even for the traffic. A lot of people are thinking, I just want to get more traffic, more traffic. Right. But let's say, for example, if, if, if I was casual law and you're Kyle law, right and somebody comes in for a quote and you quote them 5,000 and I quote them 6,000, but I don't have any social profiles, they, they might say, well, actually, Kyle's got loads of case studies, even on Facebook, Instagram. It's, it's more of like a CRO more than anything. I, well, you know, a lot of the, the eat signals, I think, at a minimum are CRO. Yeah. Like, you can you can debate it all you want, but I know for a fact if somebody comes to a website and, they don't, and they're not seeing those trust signals, they're not buying. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at a minimum, do it for that. But I think the same thing with the social profiles, for sure. Yeah, so... The, the next thing I would do after that, though, is I want to own my brand name mm -hmm. across the web. And so I'm going to go in and get, like, um, you know, mybusiness.tumblr.com, mybusiness.wordpress.com. Yeah. You know, WordPress .com. And I'm not going to post on those except that I'm going to put in uh, my NAP, my name, address, phone number, link to the website, link to, to relevant email addresses and start to 
essentially like running your own citations, mm -hmm. but you're owning that brand name. You're getting a very soft link coming in to the site. You're kind of protecting the site a bit so that you're not instantly doing pillow links, pillow links. If you like that term, I don't know if I like that term or not, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that concept. Mm -hmm. So the first rounds of links so that you're not going to like some hardcore parkour, you know, link building campaign. And you know, why would people be linking to you? But all those links are within the guidelines. You're allowed to do these links. Yep. Um, and you should do them because it, it falls under that category of uh, Google, helping Google understand what your site is about. And there's so many benefits from doing it. And that, that, those are the first two rounds of, of links that I would do. Yeah, I think the, the next step from that would be a press release. Yeah. There's, there's like, um, even franchises do press releases. Like, they, they, like, for example, there might be like a Pizza Hut in Orlando and they might go and set up one in Miami and they'll do a press release. Yeah. Like, hey, we've- New location. Just, yeah, new location. At least make it somewhat press worthy. Yeah, don't, 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 don't just, <laughs> I've seen some terrible press releases. Um, what I might actually do is I'll, um, I, I'll try to link like a, a good example in, in the description for like a, a good press release. Um, but it does come down to the right. Do you have a good one? What is, what is your, <laughs> um, I have done press releases for certain websites. Um, what, what I typically do is like, if say, for example, it's a new business, um, I'll have like, the name of the business in the actual press release, like we've opened in XYZ location. Um, I might even have like a video. Um, I, I try to do like, there's a lot of things that I do prior to doing the press release. So I'll have like, um, I'll try to do like a video tour of the actual location if I possibly can. Um, I'll have images. I'll have like the, the logo of the business. I'll have the nap, yeah. like what you mentioned. Um, I'll uh, yeah, like as as much as I possibly can, I'll I'll try to include in that um in that press release. I like how all the press releases say like for immediate release or something like that. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> then I think about like all the ones that like people like you and I do, and like who's sitting around waiting for this news. <laughs> <laughs> like this was the one piece of news that they were praying to God would come through the wires one day. <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of spammy pre press releases yeah. that like, they just don't do anything. But again, like what we've mentioned before, the press release isn't going to jump you from position 55 to position five. It's, it's more so getting your brand and your yeah. nap and your business name mentioned on as many different domains as you possibly can. Yeah. And also a lot of press releases, there are no follow links. That's right. Um, but that's so, okay. Yeah, that that's that's totally fine. Um, I the, we will get on to the the, the no follow links as well because we've done a, a few different tests. Yeah. Um, but then what are you doing after the press release? After that, then I'm going to start looking at um how those um supporting content things are are going along and and if I'm getting any traction maybe with those uh, top level kind of pages. Uh, but early on in a website. I would consider to start to sprinkle in some links mm -hmm. into those silos. Yep. Maybe a couple to the supporting pages, maybe a couple to the um, to that target page. But then I also want to balance that, that I'm still sending links to my home page. Yeah. Because you don't want things to get out of whack where all your internal pages are getting all the links. But at this point, I would consider start to sprinkle things in mm -hmm. and just to see how the site responds. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. See what's going on, see how it feels. You know, am I getting good traction out of this or, you know, because you can start maybe your research went wrong <laughs> yeah. you know, like you know maybe things just went you know and that that's that's totally fine by yeah. the way because a lot of people are they're 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 scared to publish an article and mm -hmm. it's like guys you know that there's an edit button there's also a delete button as well yeah, exactly <laughs> right just get it up and see what happens and it's okay to prune if you yeah. realize things going or consolidate you know content mm -hmm. um but i want to see at this point we've done a lot right so we've got say five top level pages up each of those has five supporting pages and maybe we've done a resource page plus such as all the admin pages you have mm -hmm. to do depending on the site anyway and then we've done our rounds of citations uh we've grabbed web 2.0s and we've done a press release that's a lot of work yeah yeah, yeah. you know we're we're six months into this project now yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> we're actually 35 <laughs> minutes in. <laughs> you know like that that's that's a lot of work uh to get through i want to see how things are going now mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know, is this website responding 
you know, uh, is it going as, as I would reasonably expect it to go? A little bit of a tip is um, I typically like to, so obviously you've got your nav bar links, you've got your footer links, and also some websites also have sidebar links yeah. as well. But we, we obviously both know that those links, they don't pass as much link Correct. equity through to those pages. So on any website, it doesn't matter if you're e-commerce, affiliate, local, um, literally all websites, I on the homepage, I like to have internal links to the pages, like the, the bottom, bottom yeah. layer pages. Yeah. So for example, if we're going after like divorce lawyers, immigration law, um, all, all, all of those pages, I'm, I'm making certain I've got internal links from the homepage. And the reason for that is because you can't really go wrong with building links to the homepage. Right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you can build as, as don't, don't go and spam your websites, but you can go and build a lot of links to the homepage. It could be branded. Yeah. And as long as you have good internal links to the pages that generate you the most amount of leads or the most amount of cash, um, you, you can't really go wrong. Yeah, that's right. And... Uh, especially if they're branded links, mm -hmm. it makes sense for, for those links to happen. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It makes a lot less sense if somebody's, you know, you're selling vacuums and buy Best Vacuum 2024, somehow anchor text that people are using to your site. That's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not natural at all. Yeah, so then um, going over to the local SEO side of stuff, okay. um, local landing pages, GMBs, stuff like that. Where, 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 where are we starting with those types of pages now? Yeah, on the local side, you really want to identify what is your local, mm -hmm. right? What, what, what are the areas you're targeting? Are you targeting a city? Are you targeting neighborhoods? Are you targeting multiple cities, et cetera? And then um, I would have, if I'm building out a local site, I would actually have like all the services generically, you know, that, that you're offering. And then I would also have them geo tagged as well. Right on the site, so it have pages that are specific to a, a region as well, or the location that, that you actually want to go after. Now, uh, in local, um, just by geotagging the page, so putting a location, it gets you around a lot of duplicate content issues. I think, don't quote me, but I feel like that was actually a recent statement from Google that if you have geotagged a page, it's not duplicate content because mm -hmm. they understand that services are quite similar. Yeah, but you yeah. do need to go after. It's uh, like um, regions. Domino's in the UK, they've got like um, maybe 6,000 different stores. Don't quote me on that, but um, you can only redo the Domino's right. menu so many times. So many times. Right? <laughs> so like, that's like, a, a, maybe not 100%, but like 95% duplicate content. But they have but, to have those pages for the locations because exactly. if they don't have the page and they're not going to rank for it. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, so you're totally fine by putting in a, a, a geotag, maybe even speaking just a little bit to the location, and mm -hmm. then that's enough that you're not running into to duplicate content issues in local. That's, that's kind of like a big first step is what is your local, what is your location, and then making sure you've got pages mm -hmm. uh, for those locations. Then Google My Business or Google Business Profile, I think they've renamed it recently. Um, yeah, Google, the... GBP yes. it doesn't have the same ring though. No, it's not. I I, I still call it GMB. It'll, GMB. it'll be GMB until we die. Yeah. So um, with the Google Business Profile, what I typically like to do is I'll upload videos of inside and outside. That's super important mm -hmm. because if if your outside video matches like the actual Google card that's like took the actual images and stuff, that's a, that's like a really important ranking factor. Mm -hmm. that not many people talk about. Photos of inside and outside, reviews and replying to the reviews as well, um, answering any questions and adding the services. So making certain you, you, any service that you actually have listed on your website, you should also have it listed on your Google business profile. And then is there anything else that I am forgetting? Is there anything else that you would do? I think like? that's all great. The next thing I would do as a next step is I would search for a competitor that has uh, the knowledge graph, you know, mm -hmm. on the right hand side, and then within that you're going to see areas for reviews. Some of them are obvious, but some of them are not, and some of them are very specific to a niche. I'm going to go in and make sure that I'm claiming all of those profiles, and then responding to reviews there. Yeah, because it's not just Google reviews. You'll see that sometimes they're pulling reviews from Facebook. Sometimes they're pulling reviews from a niche specific site. Mm -hmm. That means that's a very important site to Google. Yes. They're yeah, pulling yeah. a lot of information out of there. I want to make sure I've gone in and I've optimized my profile there, that all my information is consistent mm -hmm. and that I'm active on that. The next thing I'm going to do is, again, 
on a branded search for myself and then a branded search for competitors, I'm going to look what shows up organically in the SERPs. And you're going to see a lot of third-party sites, you know, like um, like Glassdoor, which talks about people that have worked for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, other niche-specific sites, you know, if you're in a med spa, you're going to see med spa review sites. Justia. Exactly right. Anything that shows up there, I'm also going in and optimizing and, and claiming. Yeah. Because uh, you need to control the narrative about your site, mm-hmm. one. And two is that Google's using this information. Yeah. It's showing up there. So you want to make sure that it is exactly as it should be, um, especially the ones that show up in the knowledge graph, for sure. And then the second, the next thing is the ones that show up in those organic results. Uh, I don't want somebody else to be talking about my company in a way that I'm not controlling that narrative. I'm not responding to a negative review there. You want to make sure that you're capturing that, but then all that information that Google might be getting from those locations, that it's consistent across the board, that you're clearly explaining to Google who you are, what you are as a thing, that you're you're an obvious entity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain... That would be it. You, you've also got products as well on Google Business Profiles. So you, you could dabble into that. Like there's what what I recommend as well for the Google Business Profiles. Some services, they use services as in the actual Google Business Profile as the tab. Some mm. of them use products. I know that in the UK, um, products is more prominent. But for example, if you're HVAC in California, that's more the services tab. So again, do a little bit of re- reverse engineering yeah. and then set it up accordingly. That goes back to kind of that very first thing that I was talking about. Find two or three sites that are doing it well. Yeah. They're consistently ranking. Mm-hmm. They're consistently ranking for a reason. Google likes these sites. Yeah. You know, that also like, so there's always the question in local, I get it constantly, is what should my URL structure be? Mm-hmm. Should I go dot com slash service slash location should i go dot com slash location and then have a subfolder with services look at the sites that are doing it well don't reinvent the wheel Mm -hmm. look at the sites in your area that are consistently crushing it do that yeah yeah yeah. you know literally just do that it also comes down to how you'll you'll do much better than you just trying to figure out on your own yeah definitely it also comes down to how big of a website you want to set up as well so like for example if you're going to set up like a maybe a 60 page website you can do whichever url structure just about yeah but again i would look at because they're going to be 60 page sites in your niche Mm -hmm. yeah and they're ones that are consistently doing well take the guesswork out of it yeah you know, and like, hey, you know, these guys are consistently crushing it. Google clearly likes this site, you know, and their structure has not held them back. Mm-hmm. That's the one I'm doing. Did you know that 81% of businesses are overspending when it comes to actually trying to rank their website organically in Google? That's why I've decided to create the Traffic Accelerator System. It will tell you exactly what your website is lacking. The Traffic Accelerator System will tell you exactly how many backlinks you need, what articles you're missing on your website, and also how to internally link those articles together to gain topical authority. Now, if you're struggling to rank on Google, click the link down below, get the Traffic Accelerator System for your website. It's only $195 and it will tell you exactly everything your website is lacking. So then um, away from off-page SEO, we've got analytics and obviously tracking in general. Now, obviously... Everyone's favorite thing. Yeah. And everyone's so good at it. (laughs) Everyone hates GA4. (laughs) I don't even... I don't even know what it is. Yeah, it's <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I have no concept of what GA4 is. So are you not setting up GA4 at all? Oh no, I'm certain. definitely setting it right, up. Okay, uh, but I do nothing with it personally. Right. Okay. <laughs> but no, you need to set those things up mm-hmm. for sure. And there's, there is, I, I, I kid, but there, there is good information in there. But um, uh, it is a pretty tricky. Do you know what? It's, it was one of those ones where I logged into it, and for about two hours i was like i have no idea what's going on but then i, sw- I watched maybe one or two videos and i'm like right okay i know my way around it so if say for example you wanted to ask me like how much traffic has the website had or how many clicks is this page or sorry how many internal clicks has that, that page had i can tell you stuff like that it, mm-hmm. it just takes maybe about 40 minutes of relearning it um but away from google analytics what are you doing for um so obviously you set up google search console what are you doing for tracking keywords? Um, almost exclusively Search Console. Right, okay. Uh, one thing, actually back on, on analytics, one thing I do like to see is referral traffic. Yeah. 
you know, because you're, you're not going to get that anywhere else. And I do kind of like to see other channels where people are coming into because uh, more and more I'm getting convinced that referral traffic is a very strong signal. Mm-hmm. It's something that Google is actually looking at and uh, coming from social media, for example, that you're actually getting traffic from other places outside of organic, that it's not just organic. And I do want to see that there's a mix and I want to see where th- people are coming from. And that's, that's probably yeah. what I use analytics for the most. What One, like... ROI tip for this is like for for example if you're a business owner and maybe you've got a listing on Yelp you've got a listing on Yellow Pages and you've also got a listing on on Justia right which is like a a, di- a director just for lawyers yeah. um obviously all three of them have their premium upgrade version and if you see that like let's say for example Justia or, or Yellow Pages is sending you tons of referrals it might actually be worth paying that like extra i don't know 150 bucks getting that premium version of that listing because it's kind of you're getting boosted at the top then i can give you another reason for it um on the agency side of things we actually only ever optimized one page on our site right because we identified um this is good traffic for us and what was pretty funny is we were always number one or number two for the term and it was clutch is who we were fighting so we're like probably number two in the maps or number three in the maps somewhere in there and then we're always one organically or two, and it's us and clutch going back and forth. And then we realized, let's just bam. So that, that way it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're in the number one spot, that's great. If we're in the number two spot or the clutch is number one and they click on it, we're number one in clutch. Yeah. And that really increased sales. It really increased people. Like I think also people, they're looking at that, that second spot anyway, and they see us number one again. So kind of having that number one in two spots, it was, it was, yeah, it, 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 it was it's, worth, it's kind of like, it was worth um, doing. It's like a, it's like parasite SEO in, in a sense, but it it's, is. It's, it's a lot cleaner. Yeah, than, well, it's, yeah, it is parasite SEO. I mean, that's where there's nothing wrong with parasite SEO. Where if you do a search for your product or service, whatever you want to sell, and there's a top ten list mm-hmm. that's ranking, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to that top ten list and saying, "Hey, we've got a new product. We'd love you to check out and see if we can't get it into your list." That's yeah. parasite SEO, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So then, um, very quickly. Let's speak about schema markup. Oh, you know what though? I'm sorry. Yeah. For keyword research, mm-hmm. or excuse me, keyword tracking, I'm only using Search Console. Yeah. Um, I'm the same. Uh, all data is bad data, <laughs> you know, it, it, when it comes down to it. But I think this is the best of the worst. Do, do you know what? The, the reason why I only use Google Search Console is because I tried setting up a keyword tracker maybe about four and a half years ago. And it was only until I started setting up and I realized that you need to map out every single keyword or key phrase that that page is ranking for. And just doing that for one page could take you like 40 minutes to do. Yeah. And also when, when I don't really want to track a specific keyword necessarily, I want to see how a page is performing because you want to exactly. look because healthy pages aren't ranking for one keyword. They're ranking for hundreds or mm-hmm. thousands of keywords. And so I want to really kind of keep that perspective more than... And people, I can, I know people are saying like, but I want to win that one turn. I understand that, but you can have a page that is extremely successful and is bringing in a lot of traffic, and you're not ranking that well for that one term, but you're ranking really well for those other hundred terms. And so I really, and Search Console is nice in the way that it sets up for that. That's a lot more of what I talk to people about. Is like we're looking at how this page is performing, and Search Console is pretty decent for that. So that's that's all that I use. Yeah. So then um, schema markup very quickly. Um, you've obviously got different types of schema markup. You've got like product, you've got um, local business, organization, um, offer schema. What schema are you using? All sites should have organization schema. Mm-hmm. And you need to identify what type of thing that you are to Google and the way to do that is through schema. So all of them should have that. If you're selling a product, you should have a product. And then after that, I'm going to look and see, again, those sites that are doing it well, have they invested in schema? Mm-hmm. And if they have, what have they done? And that is probably exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, especially if it's like a national brand, like those brands have spent millions upon millions of dollars on their SEO. And if they're consistently ranking well and like in, in regions, that means they're consistently doing SEO good. They're doing it well across all those locations. I'm going to emulate that. Yeah. Because I don't have millions upon millions of dollars to invest in trial and error, but here, here's what they've done. So Again, I'm looking to see what those best sites are doing with there. Now, the one problem with schema is a lot of a lot of people do schema poorly. Mm-hmm. And so it isn't as easy as some other things just to look at those best sites. You do maybe need to do a little bit digging. But I don't go far and wide on schema. I'm just going to do something that's, you know, when people are like, you know, is my, am I this or am I a that? Or 
because sometimes schema is confusing when you're looking at the the schema.org list of what something don't get in the weeds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get in the weeds on that. Get your organization up, have your products, obvious services, other things that are obvious, and then you're good. Yeah, I, th- I think the, the the one biggest thing that I would say is, is if you're like a local business and you've got a GMB or a Google business profile, set up organization schema and make certain that the nap is consistent. So I think on organization schema, it asks for your open hours. Mm-hmm. It asks how expensive you are. Um, it asks for your services. As long as that's mentioned on your website, it's also mentioned on your Google Business Profile, and it's also mentioned in the schema. You, you've you've almost you've basically ticked the. I box. totally agree. One thing that I might add in, if you want to get a little cute, is adding in like who founded the company, mm-hmm. directors of certain things, because there are places to add in humans, and I think it is a good idea to associate. To say that we're a real company, we have real people. Mm-hmm. I, that's not a bad idea at all within your schema. Um, you could do that with author schema too. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this person has actually written our stuff. I would consider that as well because you do want to humanize to to show Google that it's not just a fly by night one of you affiliate guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, trying to uh, hide in the corners. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've we've covered. Everything is, is there anything? I think we built an entire website. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we've, we've spoke a website into an existence. Um, is there anything else that you want to add? One small thing. So we, you know, we did that initial layer of supporting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am going to consistently look at doing rounds of supporting content at higher and higher levels of search volume and difficulty as the site gets stronger. Yeah. And how you know when it's time to move up a rung is if you again you launch it and you've done minimal SEO and you rank. Mm-hmm. quickly mm-hmm. for it and then you know you're, you're posting in that level that google trusts you and you can continue to post and so uh as the site continues to grow i'm still being mindful of continuing to build out that foundational kind of because the foundation you want to get stronger and stronger and stronger and it's a way to continue to gain strength and authority again without relying as much on external signals and things that can cause a lot of variance and disruption to your site so don't let that go that will always be an integral part of any campaign that I'm still putting out that type of content linking to pages that I care about uh, a lot. And so that's, that's always part of it. So that doesn't just go away on that first round. It's a continual part of my process. Yeah. So then I'm just going to do some quick fire questions because I I, I know that there'll be certain people that are asking certain questions, but how many articles does a website need? Oh, that's like how long is a piece of string? Yeah. Um, the answer is it's as long as you want it to be. But again, I'm going to look and see what I need. You uh-huh. know, like, you know, we, we talk about like what's topical coverage. Mm-hmm. Let's go and see the sites that have covered it. Yeah. 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 yeah and that, that should give you an idea. What about, um, what's your thoughts on content velocity or is, is that something that you're worried about or? That's a funny one, isn't it? Cause so we've done things where we've launched like a piece of content every day and then we've launched 30 pieces at once, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of see like, is there a difference? And in the end it all kind of washes out the same. Yeah. In my head, I feel like one a day has got to be better because you're showing Google you're consistently posting and it, here comes the good stuff and there's a reason to come back to the site. But I can't tell you that a site performs better one way or the other. You, the, the you, have, one, you, have, you have feelings on it? So the, the – the, by the way, my opinion is the same as yours. I'm like surely uploading 30 in one day that looks spammy, right? But yeah. it's, it's not actually the case. I think that uploading 30 in one day is better because of the age of the actual certain pages. Could be, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, could, I see that, and that's something we talked about earlier, like the only page that can't rank is a page that doesn't exist. Yeah. And there's off, there's a time component to ranking, so why would you hold it back mm-hmm. if you have the content, just get it up on the site? Yeah. But then people always take it to the weird extreme. They're like, okay, well, 30 is one thing. What if I did 3,000? Well, who's doing 3,000? <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Not even Forbes is doing 3,000. Yeah, but exactly. But somebody, they're always, I know somebody listening to this, is, their first thought was, well, I want to do 5,000 pages. Can I do it? I don't know. <laughs> and that seems like the wrong thing. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> but the, 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 somebody always goes immediately <laughs> to the extreme. Immediately. The, the thing is, so that when I first got into what, like web design and SEO and stuff, um, the company that I worked at, they had to approve all of the articles. So they basically hired like three um, apprentices in the UK 
And their job was they would write articles Monday to Friday and the articles wouldn't get approved until Monday the next week. And then Monday the next week, it might be like 25 articles. Each of them would be uploading. So they're uploading like 75 articles in that mm-hmm. in that one day. Um, so there's there's certain things like that where it's like, well, are you doing the right thing? Are you not? Like some companies, they just, they, it, it needs to go through a process like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Um, and Google Google doesn't know like, oh, they've they've uploaded 600 in one day or they've uploaded 60 in one day, let's penalize them. It's like, no, well, what if like the managing director of the company needs to approve the, the actual content before it goes live yeah. to make certain that it's aligning with the actual brand? There's all of these little if factors. And I'm like, well, is it okay to up, upload 30? I think it is. Feels like it. Yeah. Feels like it's fine. Is it 3,000? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's find a middle ground, my friends. <laughs> yeah. So um, what about content length? Oh, sure, sure. Um, you know, uh, I don't know how many times somebody's been like, I want to rank for this term and, and I'm optimizing my product page and the product page only has 250 words on it, but Google is rewarding a 3,000 page article. You know, the content length significantly matters because mm-hmm. you're never going to compete with that 3000 i think the the best answer for this is that it the, your content needs to be long enough but not fluffy so what i mean by that is like you you've got some monster 6000 word articles that aren't performing and as soon as you read the article it's like yeah the reason why this article isn't performing is because the the website owner has said this article needs to be 6,000 words to their content writer. Right. And the content writer's just fluffed up the page. Well, they've gone away from centerpiece annotation. Mm-hmm. It's the idea that this is the concept of the the page. And then what happens if you get outside of that concept, you've gotten outside of centerpiece annotation, and then Google starts to discount the content. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, you're, you're, how you said it is exactly right. You have to answer it appropriately mm-hmm. and not deviate too far. Because once you get into that fluff, you're deviating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're getting away from what that page should be about. Yeah. And then um, the last question. Uh, so we've spoke about content velocity, link velocity, off page. I think it's the exact same thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. Like, how many links could you reasonably build in a day? It depends on the types of links. So, yeah. for example, if if you're doing citations, you could blast out like, or you, you can get like legitimate like gigs that will get you like 60, 100, 150 citations. Press release that if you think of that how many press releases, that yeah. could be thousands. Yeah. Um, that being said, with link velocity, you just probably need to worry about your anchor text, like what you mentioned. Like yeah. if you're internally linking to a page and it's like. Um, best running shoes for men 2024 it's like well that's a little bit a little on the nose yeah <laughs> <laughs> a little on the nose but if, if, if you're doing like branded links you can't really go go wrong with that um there's an og seo his name's john lindbacher and he has this con- concept called cloud cover mm-hmm. and so let's say you've got some targeted link building going on and you know this is going to move the needle he would advocate doing a press release at the same time yeah because then nobody's going to find those links. Nobody's going to see exactly what you did because you've got that thousand links of cloud cover and then you've got things going on. So I would consider doing my link building in conjunction with other things mm-hmm. and then do what you got to do. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Where, where, where can people find you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm around town. They can find me around. Um, yeah, the the tool is pageoptimizer.pro. A lot of things we talked about, those are features in the tool. Mm-hmm. And you know the reason that those are the features are there is because i need them yeah <laughs> you know i'm solving my own problem with that kind of thing um can i do a real shameless plug yeah go for it uh a lot of people want to use a tool like mine but they don't have the time to learn it or they don't have the expertise and these are people that are maybe running their own businesses or this is um a small medium sized agencies people that are just getting off the ground and we're starting a new service we're calling it white glove where we run the tool for you and the it's, it combines keyword research to find the best opportunities on your site and then things that you're missing. Mm-hmm. And then how to create that content and how to interlink it. Yeah. A lot of what we've talked about today. And it's at a price point that I think is pretty reasonable. We're talking a couple hundred dollars per silo. Um, and we're just launching that. And I think if a lot of people are listening to this and they're like, I want to do all of that, but I don't have the time. This actually answers, I think, a lot of 
of, of those questions for people. Yeah, but well, one thing I will do is I'll, I'll have a link to pageoptimizer.pro. Um, I'll have a link to, to your social profiles and I'll also have a link to that service um, that you guys can check out. Because what, what, one, one thing that I always try to do is push products and services to the audience that I think that it's, it's actually really going to help them. And you were showing me it last night and I'm like, this is actually really I'm really proud of it, actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of it in that it, I think it's it's better SEO than a lot of agencies are doing mm. at a price point that if you're an agency, this is something you can use to to sell to your clients. If you're doing your own SEO, you know, you can't afford the two, three thousand a month kind of packages. But, you know, something in a couple hundred dollars is in your range. This, this is going to give you good SEO to do. For your actually, site. for the first two people that comment saying i love kyle <laughs> you'll get a free one. Oh, there okay. we go all right okay so yeah thanks for joining me thanks so much man i appreciate it